I said in this video I would show you how to do labels um, but because I want to put more than one thing on the window at once then I thought it was important to show you box layout first and we can do labels next time. This also shows us how to distinguish one button from another um, from the code that's sent to us with the widget. Okay, so now let's make our third app. This one's going to be a little bit longer because obviously we've got the container um, in there this time in terms of the box layout. Um, we're going to have two buttons and we're also going to have a way of distinguishing between those two buttons. Now I've already gone to the liberty of stripping out everything from lesson two and then leaving this all here. And I said to you before, this will always be here. And this lot's going to be there most of the time as well. So um, first thing I want to do is to create the container. So those who've not done graphical user interface program before, the container is basically the uh, having a bit set up where I can put other widgets up as opposed to the window and where they go. When we did a button in the last one, it took up all the space. But because we're going to have two buttons this time, then we need to have, way, have a way of setting those up. So we're going to use the um, box layout. So self dot box, you can call it what you like. And obviously GTK dot box again. There's nothing new there. And what we want to do is by default, it orientates that you have the buttons horizontally alongside each other um, but I actually want just because it looks better but it helps me show you something anyway I want to set the orientation up so it's vertical and the way you do that is equals vertical and that's it that'll put one above the other and then I want some spacing between the um, boxes which in our case is going to be between the buttons of two pixels you can set it what you like to what looks good I thought that looked good that's why I did it then what I want to do is I want to add that box to my window just like we added buttons before so it's going to be self dot add and then what do we want to add we want to add um, self dot box the box that we had before so what I'm now going to do I want to create my two buttons which I'm going to put there and so I'm going to have self and then we're going to have button um, one then that equals and we know how to do this a GTK um, a GTK button and that button is going to have a label and I'm going to call that label four and then the next thing I want to do, whoops, the next thing that I'd like to do is um, connect um, what happens when that button's clicked. So it's going to be self, <coughs> pardon me, button one dot connect. Nothing new. We did that last time. And I want it to respond to the um, clicked event. And then what I want to do is I want to call the uh, method self dot button clicked. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to do the same thing. It's going to be just save us time here, but I want to do this one for button two. So I'm just going to change that to two. I'm going to change that to two, and then I'm just going to put this. Whoops! I want to call this one um, against and. Look, I'm calling the same method here. So you're probably thinking, well, it's going to do the same thing. It doesn't matter which button um, I've clicked. Well, I've done that for a reason, so I can show you one more thing. And I could have one go to button one clicked, a method for that, and one button two clicked, a method for that. But I'd want to um, show you that we can distinguish between um, the buttons. Actually, if I just bring up what we had before, if you remember on here when we did button pressed, we took along this and we took along the widget that actually did it. So we're going to use that idea later on. So now what I've got to do, I've created my buttons. I need to put them in the um, box. And the documentation for this I don't think is actually um, that good. So hopefully this will be quite useful. Um, so box and then we're going to say, and this is interesting, pack start. Now you can have pack start and back, um, pack um, end. Do you remember I said we have the buttons one above the other? So pack start means the first button that I tell it, can it go to the top? And the second one, put it below there, the third one below there and so on. If I did pack end, the first one would be the one at the bottom instead. So it's just, um, you know, 
it just makes it a little bit easier to do that. So first of all, we say, what's the thing I want in that first position? Well, we know that that's going to be self dot um, button one. And then we have these two things we're looking for. That's true and true. Now what these are, are in that space that we've given for button one, basically, do we want to um, put in the padding? Do we want to fill it all the way um, to the end? And that's exactly what we want to do. So, and then um, zero there. So that's about the padding that's going on again. So let's go for self dot um, box dot whoops dot pack starts. And this time we want to do self dot button two, and it's going to be the same code. So it's going to be true, true. Yeah, we do want to fill up the whole space. And no, I don't want any extra padding that's going along the outside. So that would yeah will look all right. But now what we want to do? Whoops, this lot should all be indented. Sorry about that. That's some really bad um, stuff there. Um, so it's one of the benefits of using the Atom um, process, um, Atom processor, the Atom um, editor there that I can do all that. So now I want to define this function. So def um, button underscore clicked, and we know that we take um, self with us there, and we know that we take widget. No difference at all. Now what we want to do is we want to find out which one we're clicking. So I want to say the response. Um, I made that up. I could call that whatever I like. But um, so I want to go to the um, widget and I want to get the value of one of its properties. And the property is I want to know what is its label. And the reason I'm doing that is because they've got different labels. So then I can refer to either of them. So. Now I've done do this. I'm going to say if um, response equals um, four, then I'm going to print a statement. So let's see what shall we print. Let's pretend I've not written this down already. Um, always, well, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Always um, agreeing, and then else because if it's not that one, it must be the other one. Let's print. You can't please everyone. Okay, a little bit longer that one, but let's see what happens. We can see it all there. Let's bring up the editor and it's taking its time. Okay, not lesson one. Let's go back. We want lesson three and let's run that. So let's go and get that one. So here it is. You can see we've got two things on there now. We've got one above the other. Um, they'll fill that space um, in the middle. There's that just in between there. There's a gap of two. I click on four, always agreeing, because that came from here. Click on against. You can't please everyone. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found the video helpful. Um, all the code that was used in the video will be supplied below. Staying in field with Winfield.